A reading from the first lit book of Kings. Salomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of the whole community of Israel, and stretching forth his hands toward heaven, he said, Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven, above or on earth below. You keep your covenant with of mercy with your servants, who are faithful to you with their whole heart. Can it indeed be that God dwells on earth? If the heavens and the highest heavens cannot continue, how much less this temple which I have built? Look kindly on the prayer and petition of your servant, O Lord my God, and listen to the cry of supplication which I, your servant, utter before you this day. May your eyes watch night and day over this temple, the place where you have decreed you shall be honored. May you heed the prayer which I, your servant, offer in this place. Listen to the petitions of your servant and of your people Israel, which they offer this place. Listen from your heavenly dwelling and grant pardon. The word of the Lord. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, mighty God. My soul yearns and pines for the court of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest in which he puts her young. Your altar, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Bless thee who dwell in your house, continually they praise you. O God, behold our self, and look upon the peace of your anointed. I had rather one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I had rather lie at the house threshold of the house of my God than dwell in the tent of the wicked. Alleluia, alleluia. Incline my heart, O God, to your decrees and favor me with your law. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Pharisees with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming to the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they have traditionally observed, the purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and scribes questioned him, why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? He responded, well, did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites? As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines human precepts. You disregard God's commandment, but claim to human tradition. He went on to say, how well you have set aside the commandment of God in order to uphold your tradition. For Moses said, honor your father and your mother, 
and whoever curses father or mother shall die. Yet you say, if someone says to father or mother, any support you might have had from me as Corbin, meaning dedicated to God, you allow him to do nothing more for his father or mother. You nullify the word of God in favor of your tradition that you have handed on, and you do many such things. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, Christians who owned slaves and maltreated them is an example of what Jesus referred to people worshiping God with their lips, but not their hearts. The saint that we remember today, uh, Josephine Bakita, at about the age of seven, she was kidnapped by Arab slave traders. Over the course of the next eight years, she was sold and resold several times. The trauma of the abduction caused her to forget her own name, and she was given the name Bakita by the slave traders, an Arabic word that means lucky or fortunate. Bakita was born in southern Sudan near Darfur around 1869. She was the niece of the tribal chief. In her captivity, she suffered much brutality. On one occasion, she was beaten so severely that she spent the month unable to move from her bed. Her last owner was an Italian diplomat. He brought her to Italy and became a nanny to her daughter. In 1888, Paquita was left in the care of the Canossian sisters in Venice while the owners moved to the Red Sea for business. In 1890, she was baptized. When the diplomat returned, he wanted Bakita back, but she did not wish to go back to them. When they tried to force the issue, he was taken to court, and the court ruled that since Sudan outlawed slavery even before Bakita was born, And since Italy did not recognize slavery, the court ruled that Bakita was a free woman. For the first time in her life, Bakita found herself in control of her destiny, and she chose to remain with the Kenosian community. In 1896, Bakita made her final vows to become a Kenosian sister. She is remembered for her gentleness, calming voice, ever-present smile, and holiness. The people called her with affection, our little brown mother. In her last years, as she experienced pain and sickness, she nonetheless retained her cheerfulness. If If asked how she was, she would always smile and answer, as the mother, as the father desires. She died on this day in 1947. At her canonization, Pope John Paul II said that St. Paquita's story reminds us of the importance of fighting for the rights of others. In so doing, not only will we set them free from what binds them to this world, but we will also set free their souls to become everything that God created them to be. Let us pray. This day, let us remember the Kenosian sisters and the many religious sisters consecrated to God's service, that God may bless them for their labors and fill them with an abundance of vocations to continue his service. We pray to the Lord that our leaders may enact laws that protect the most vulnerable members of society, especially the victims of sex traffic. 
we pray to the Lord. For the children of those who have experienced the darkness of slavery, may they be freed from the harmful effects that has visited upon them and their ancestors. We pray to the Lord. For an end to the coronavirus, especially those affected physically, emotionally, and financially, we pray to the Lord. This Mass is being offered in thanksgiving by Vera Rogulski and also for the repose of the soul of Francisco Lau. So for them, for all who have died and all who mourn the loss of a loved one, we pray to the Lord. And for your own intentions. For all of our intentions, we pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, into your hands we commend our cares, worries, and fears, but always confident that you will hear and will answer in a way that is best for us. Through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray then, my sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. As we proclaim your wonders, O Lord, in the Virgin Blessed Vaquita, we humbly implore your majesty that as her merits are pleasing to you, so too our dutiful service may find favor in your sight. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Salvatore, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember Francisco Lau and our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have Mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. With one heart and one faith, together we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 